الحمد لله وحده والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله اما بعد a lot of people in the world ended up in problem because of their own self either through curiosity either through they want to know too much either they ask too many questions or by their own hand by their own doing and they ended up in problem today i'm going to narrate to you a story of a man called ayman yemeni he's from yemen he studied a lot that man and he studied two languages most he studied english english and turkish and he was eager he was looking for what to do in life and he found petroleum engineering is good for him and he was looking for university to study that field and he found one of the university in turkey and he applied for it and he got a slot the story begins like this he flew to turkey and he landed in turkey and he came up from the airport and took a taxi spoke to the taxi man says i'm looking for a decent hotel take me to a decent hotel he took him to a decent hotel near sultan ahmed area top kapi and the minute he arrived the hotel he got down he was overwhelmed and overjoyed the view of the hotel and the where the hotel is and it the way it look it is looking towards the whole city is a building where it looks towards the whole city but there was one specific room he was overwhelmed with it and the minute he entered the hotel he saw the reception to be a syrian brother and he speaks arabic he start communicating with him and saying greetings and everything assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh brother i'm looking for the hotel and i need to stay here two three days and then go to university two three days and go to university and that room upstairs that is the room i want the room which is looking right in the city that's the room i want and the brother told him i know what room you're looking you're talking about and the room is 133 but that room has a man who comes here every monday and wednesday stays in that room so it's going to be difficult for me to give you because that man booked it for every monday and wednesday and his stuffs everything of his still in there he just negotiated negotiated and spoke to the brother until the brother agrees and he pays it for the days he's going to stay for one month and he goes up with a card and a room cleaner they go all the way up to the last floor that is where the room is they go there and then when they open the room the room is absolutely dirty but the cleaner the room cleaner says just give me a few minutes i will clean for you the room properly and he says it was around 4 o'clock in the afternoon in the evening and he says okay while you waiting while you're cleaning is there any hotel around he told him just go above this floor the hotel of the hot, the restaurant of the hotel is up there go there and he goes up take a lift and goes further down one floor right on top of the building he goes and sits there while he's a bit tired and while he's sitting when he came in first he looks around the whole so many chairs so many tables so many and then he just chose a corner he went and sat there waiting for the uh, for the waiter to come while he's waiting and looking down and lift his hood up he saw an old man sitting there eating and staring at him and he was gobsmacked surprised what is going on when i came here there was nobody here how come there's somebody there and the waiter came when the waiter came the waiter he spoke to the waiter the waiter he ordered up some food and the waiter went and came back and brought food for him 
So when he came back and brought food for him, while he was eating and eating, the man keeps on staring at him, sitting there. He ate, ate until he finished. When he finished, he called the waiter. The waiter came back. While he's calling the waiter, the man in that table disappeared. And he asked, he was thinking, what's going on? Is it me or is it not me? Is it me or is it not me? And he asked the waiter, was anybody here in this uh, restaurant today? He said, no, it's only you since in the morning. It's only you here, no one else. So in this floor now, it's me and you and nobody else. And he says, people only come in the night, not now, or four o'clock. In the night, it'll be fully loaded from the people who stay in the hotel. And he paid the food and he left. While he's in the, in the lift going down to the eighth floor, because the room where he, took, he was given is in the eighth floor. He's going down, he starts thinking, is that me? Oh, it's because I'm tired of flights and everything like that. And then he reaches his room. And the, uh, the room cleaner finished cleaning the room. And he talked to him. And they tell him, listen, let me tell you something. I am telling you by Allah, tell, go down and tell the reception to give you another room. This room is not good. He say, why? Because of the old man? Oh, why? He say, I'm just telling you. He say, no, don't worry, I'll take this room. I'll take this room. Don't worry about it. And then the boy says, oh Allah, remember, oh Allah, I've already told this man, this room is not good. And he's insisting taking. The guy took the keys and he entered the room. The minute he entered the room, he started feeling goosebumps and feeling heaviness and everything in the room and fear locked the room put his bag somewhere took his clothes off lie down in the bed for a bit and took his watch off and put it in the drawer inside left went to the toilet and start showering to go to, to have a rest while he's showering he start hearing the voice of a woman and a, and a door, of a woman and a girl. And he turns the water off, and the voice disappears. He puts the water on again, shower, the voice comes back. And then he turns the water off. He puts the water on again the third time, the voice comes back of a woman and a little girl talking to each other. And he turns the water off and starts saying, who's there? Who's there? And there's no voice. And he turns the water off and goes out from the toilet. When he comes out from the toilet, he sees the TV is on. And he starts thinking, oh, it could be the TV he was talking. So there's nothing there. It's fine. So he goes to bed and relaxes. And he's thinking, oh, I'm going to relax a bit and then wake up later and then go, to the, go, to, go and hit the town. He opens the drawer to take his watch. When he's opening the drawer, he saw a book there. Because he was going to put the watch to check the time and put alarm on. So he saw a book and he took the book and he started opening the book. And the name of the book is The Rules to Rule the Seven Kingdoms. The Rule to rule the seven kingdom. And he start going through the book, a few pages, and start reading. And I thought, ooh, this book is to do with magic and jeans and everything. He just closed it after a few pages and took the book and threw it from the window. And goes back in the bed and lying in the bed. In 10 minutes, he start hearing knock, somebody is knocking. And he start asking, who's that? He goes and open the door. When he opened the door, he saw a man who's so ugly. His face is so dry like the skin of the fish. 
and his eyes so dark in his face so dark very ugly man he goes inside by force pushing him and he goes inside and he start yelling at him what 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 are you doing in this room this is my room and he's telling he goes right to the drawer where there was the book he opens and there's no book left before he leaves the man was persisting where is the book where is the book and i must say what book leave before i call the police leave before i call the police and the iman replied and said the book i threw in that book is full of magic full of filth full of ways of calling the jinns and everything so i threw the book leave now before i call the police he said call the police and the number to call the police 153 call and call them and i'm telling you i am a son of an arab leave this room this is my room leave this room or you will be in trouble and i'm going to go and get my book and he left leave the room he goes down when disappeared i am go terrified and worried the first day in istanbul the first day in the hotel this is why i encountered now what do i do he goes right down to the reception he reaches the reception and he told the reception what is happening and the reception this time he meant a different reception with the different the, the, the shift of the arab syrian brother left so there's another guy and he told him this man you've met is a trouble man this man is bad this man is very very bad so be careful or you leave the room he say i man say no i'm not going to leave the room just let me know when he's coming so i man goes back to the room and enter the room and close the room and he goes and sleeps and he wakes up one o'clock in the night someone's knocking the door tok 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 and he say who's there and he opens the door he saw the old man with two knives he come in so hard and forceful and he pushes the door and the old man is pushing the door with knives he wants to chop him into pieces and he's holding the knives and he managed to push aiman and aiman fell flat on the floor unconscious aiman woke up salatul fajr adhan woke him up he woke up looking at his body if he's got injury knife injury or anything he calls the police 153 and the police come when the police come they look everywhere but the police came with the owner of the hotel together they look i man told him the story there was a man came and attack they look the old man he described the old man the the one who came and attack him before he came again one o'clock in the night to attack him again so they look everywhere he could, they could not find him they ask they could not find him they go down with i man down and they look at the cctv they've looked at cctv and find that at one o'clock in the night the door of Ayman was open but there was nobody there so whatever Ayman was saying is the truth but who was he opening the door for that was the question in the police head now the police charge Ayman for causing unrest in the hotel and they put cuffs the handcuff him and took him while they are taking him everybody in the hotel looking all in the morning everybody and then he saw the man in the roof of the restaurant while he was eating he saw him looking at him he saw him that time while he's been taken by the police and the man looking at him and smiling like he's telling Ayman this is just the beginning for you so Ayman was taken to the police interrogated asked questions and more and Ayman thought the only way forward I need to find a way forward and he start telling the police me i had mental problem i had i get i hear thoughts i see people and i used to have medications back in yemen and i forgot my medication now the, this problem came back to me last night but now i'm better 
I'm really sorry what I've done. Can you please release me? The police, they released him. Nine o'clock in the morning. And he goes, walk, walk, walk out from the police. And he goes and sits on the bank of the sea in Istanbul. Sitting there for a bit at late one o'clock. And he goes back home. He goes back to the hotel. When he goes back to the hotel, he goes and sleeps. And flat, tired of what the episode and everything, exhausted. He goes back to sleep around one o'clock in the afternoon. He wakes up late in the night around 11 o'clock. He wakes up in the night and he starts hearing voice. A voice of someone is singing. Someone is singing. And he goes and listen to the voice, slowly, slowly following the voice. Someone who is singing. In the, and the sings, the song is him who is hearing. Slowly, he follows, he opens the door, he follows it through the corridor, he follows it, he follows it until he reaches a room 153. And he's open a little bit. The hellfire, no one can handle it. The hellfire, no one can handle it. The hellfire, no one can. And he was shocked. Very, very shocked. And he closed the door. And he opens the door. He says, Bismillah. And the girl disappeared. And he goes back to his room. When he goes back to his room, he started hearing. Someone is calling him. Someone is saying, Arab se, gal buria, gal sene, Arab che, gal sene, Arab che. Meaning, oh you, oh you Arab, come to me. Oh you Arab, come to me. Oh are you Arab, come to me. And then he start feeling goosebumps and fear. He doesn't know what to do. He opens the door of the voice which is calling him. He hears a voice in the corridor and he sees a very long woman and shuts the door. Boom, goes back to his room. Absolutely terrified. Ayman is absolutely terrified. He doesn't know what to do. And while he's sitting in his room, shivering, Shaking, don't know what to do. Yeah, somebody comes and knocks the door. Dick, gay, 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 gay. And he opens the door. It's his dad. But in, in the conscience of his mind, he didn't know what is, how can his dad come there? How can he does know that he's staying in that hotel? How, how, how? It didn't click in his head. It's just that he was in too much fear and too much distress. So he just thought he's his dad. And he start want to hug him, his dad push, pushed him. And he started telling him, it's your own fault. I mean, it's your own fault. You read that book. Who told you to read that book? And the dad left. Slowly, slowly went and went inside the room 153 while Aman was looking. And Aman was following slowly, slowly. When he reaches, he saw his dad in there. And then when his dad turned, very ugly face. He's not his dad. And the young woman was there with him. He rooms back to the room and stays in the room. Now, these episodes happening to Aman, nobody knows. Aman is suffering alone in room 133. Nope, he doesn't have nobody to help. Nothing in his brain comes how to solve this problem. Now, suddenly, a thoughts come into his mind, go outside and start doing, start reading uh, Adhan. He goes outside and start doing Adhan because the voice of calling him Arab se Galsene or Galburia was constant. Constant is not stopping in the corridor. A woman calling him, Jin woman. 
So he calls her then, that voice disappears. Wow. Straight away. And he feels big, big time relief. And he goes back in the room. The voice again starts. He hits another adhan. The voice disappears. It was around morning time, fajr time. Ayman comes out from the hotel and goes down, terrified. Griefing, doesn't know what to do. His body full pain. And he comes out and he goes out in the street and start walking, absolutely terrified. And he start looking for anybody to help. And he seen a man, a, a, a man coming towards him. And he looks say, this must be an Arab like me. And he stopped him and he asked him. He said, yeah, they start speaking in Arabic. He found out the man who was from Kuwait, a student as well, and he took him to his house. He took him to his house. He told him, go and shower. He showered. He gave him food and everything. He explained all his ordeal. And he took him to a Raqi, Sheikh, big Sheikh. And he got red. When he got red, he explained everything. They went to the hotel. Oh, they entered the room. The room was full of talasim, everywhere written talasim. But Ayman did not see these. And the sheikh called the police. The police came and they arrested the old man who used to live there. And Ayman was the last day to stay in the hotel. And the last day to stay in Turkey, he flew back. He rebooked his ticket for back. He gone back. Stayed for him to get back better. And this is the state of the people today. They read books through curiosity or they read books through knowledge or they read these evil books to get in touch with jinni so they can get help. When in fact, you're going to get killed if you read these books and call in upon the jinns. Because what happened now, you will cut the rope of Allah. There will be no connection. You will cut all the barriers between you and angels and du'as. There will be no angels apart from the angels of writing deeds. And the Qareen angel. The rest, the one who comes and protects you, know there because you are fully open to the devil. So those people who want to look into these books through curiosity, they, because there's so many books there which will in, make the individual go into the world of the jinn. The world of the jinn is not our world. For you to want to see them and communicate with them live, you will be in trouble. They will kill you. Stay tuned for more stories. Abu Yahya from the Rukato. وآخر دعوانا وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين لا يتبين لهم أنه الحق